Okay, so we are starting now. We are live here at Anime Expo 2019 with Kyle McCarley. <sighs> Hi, Shall everybody. We? Anything you would like to say to our viewers? Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Very short and sweet. Excellent. We'll, we'll get straight to the point then. <laughs> Question one. Uh, who or what inspired you to choose this career in the anime industry? In the anime industry specifically? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, well, let's do the long-winded version of this <laughs> answer. Uh, so growing up, all I ever wanted to do was be an actor. Um, I was doing plays and musical theater and, and uh, from, a, from a very young age. Um, and I moved out to Los Angeles, sunny California, and, and uh, went to the University of Southern California and studied theater there, um, because my goal was to be some big shot movie TV star, or something, I don't know. Uh, and somewhere along the line, I kind of lost my passion for being on stage and being in front of the camera. Just it wasn't it wasn't connecting with me the way that it was in my in my younger years. Uh, but I got really into World of Warcraft while I was in school, uh, and I got involved with a fan site called Wow Radio uh, that was basically a live podcasting network. Although I don't even think podcasts were a thing yet when it first started. So it was live internet radio, all about Warcraft. Uh, and I was playing with a bunch of friends from high school, and one of them discovered this, this fan site and was like, hey, they're looking for show hosts. We should host a show. And I went, we've been playing the game for a week, dude. We don't know what we're talking about yet. But we were all theater geeks, so what I came up with was a radio play. And uh, I, I wrote, well, co-wrote, co-directed, and, and played about 12 different characters in a little fan-made radio play based in the Warcraft universe called The Chalice of Silvermoon. Uh, Google it, it's still out there somewhere. Um, and, uh, and, and then eventually went on to actually host talk shows on that little network about Warcraft. But uh, Anyway, after graduating and floundering around for about a year, not really sure what I was doing with my life, because I wasn't really pursuing being an actor, but I didn't have anything else I wanted to do, uh, I thought back to the radio play and went, you know what, that was a lot of fun. I should take a class in voiceover and, and see what that's like. So I took a class that was specifically voice acting, um, and it kind of, it was just kind of an intro to voice acting thing that, that gave me a taste of commercial animation and video games, uh, narration and audiobooks and, and uh, promos and trailers. It was a four week class and those were the four weeks, but uh, I, I loved it. I fell in love and, and just went headlong into, all right, I'm done with trying to be on camera. I'm done with trying to be on stage. I just want to do voiceover. I just want to be behind the microphone. And that's when everything kind of clicked. And I, and I started submitting for a lot of auditions online and booking stuff and, and uh, had a pretty lucrative career in audiobooks for a little while. Um, started going to a lot of casting director workshops in the LA area with people who, who are looking for voice actors for whatever it is that they're casting for. And I eventually met Mami Okada, who is the casting director at Bang Zoom Entertainment in, uh, in, up in Burbank. Um, and she liked what I did in the workshop enough to start sending me some auditions and eventually started booking stuff. And it was, it was kind of my, my breakthrough into, into anime. Um, anime wasn't something that I was a huge fan of, really, personally. I, I watched Toonami when it was an after school block when I was a kid. Uh, big fan of Gundam Wing, yes. um, and, uh, and you know, and, and Dragon Ball, and whatever was was part of that block. I watched a lot of it, uh, but that was kind of the extent of my exposure to, to anime as a kid. So I wasn't, and, and, and I didn't really 
get into it growing up after that point uh, until I started working in the industry. But, but Mami Okada is definitely the reason that I ended up doing work in anime. Very long-winded question, but answer. But uh, yeah, we got there. We, we appreciate. So, yeah. So that kind of springboards into our second question, which is, uh, you know, with kind of the variety of shows that you've been in, is do you have a favorite genre of anime that you've worked in that you enjoy doing voices yeah. for? Anime is so cool because of the fact that there are so many different like pe people who aren't into anime don't realize that anime itself isn't a genre. There's so much within anime that that is its own like completely different thing from everything else in the anime world. Um, when I was when I was younger I got really into sci-fi and fantasy stuff, which is a lot of there's a lot of that within anime. But uh, I think somewhere along the line of my audiobook career, because I was narrating a lot of that stuff, I kinda got tired of it. So much of it was so middling, as opposed to great. <laughs> uh, you know, not everything is Firefly. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, but with with my experience in anime, I've had some really great shows within the science fiction and fantasy realm. But I think my favorites to work on are the slice of life dramas that are just really delve into the character development and the, and the stories of just regular people in regular situations, or in, in regular situations that are so much more relatable than the fantastical stuff. Uh, which is weird, because I thought as a kid that science fiction, the fantastical stuff would be what really caught my attention, but, uh, and that stuff is fun, but if, if I've got to pick one genre, I would go with the, with the slice of life stuff. The, the Your Lie in April stuff yeah. is is really touching and really powerful. Very, very, very well. uh, Okay, this one's from uh, Steven, our social media manager. Okay. Unfortunately, couldn't be here today. Uh, going back to when you first landed Mob on Mob Psycho 100, or and or um, Mika from Gundam Iron Blood Ma uh, Orphans, uh, what was your reaction when you found out those shows were coming to Tsunami? Ooh, uh, uh, public airways. Yeah, let me. You know what? I'll talk about both of those, um, but I'll start with Gundam because that was first. Uh, so I I booked the role of Mikazuki August in Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans, uh, fairly early in my anime career. I'd been doing voiceover for a while, but uh, but anime was was what really blew open the doors for me in terms of booking the stuff that that uh, that felt like I was achieving my dreams, sort of, and, and, and um, was getting some recognition for it. Uh, so when, I, at the time that I had, that I booked Iron-Blooded Orphans, I think I had worked on, let's see, my first anime was Nagiyasu, Alola in the Sea. Um, and I just had kind of a small part. I played Egoa in that, but that was kind of my first experience dubbing anime. Uh, and then from there, I got Aoba in Durarara, and uh, that was that was the the one that really kicked things off for me because he was a pretty cool character and a pretty cool show. Uh, I think then I played Shinji in Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, and then. Uh, and then from there, we had started working on Your Lie in April, uh, in which I played Watari. Um, but that was pretty much the extent of my, my anime catalog, or at least my notable roles. None of those were lead characters. They were all kind of supporting characters. And they, they were great, but uh, Mika was my first lead. Um, Gundam Wing was my favorite anime as a kid. So when the auditions came out for Iron-Blooded Orphans, I'm still basically a relative nobody within the anime industry. So I just see those auditions come out and I go, oh, man, it would be really cool to be part of a Gundam series. I just want to be in it. Even if I'm just 
soldier number three, and I shout out, hey, you stop there, <laughs> and that's it. I just want to be in it. Um, and luckily enough, uh, the, the stars aligned, and I, and I got cast in my, my first lead role in an anime series, and it was in Gundam. Um, so I got really excited about that. My reaction to being cast in that was, <laughs> I think there were tears. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was really exciting. And then going into the booth, I had to try and maintain an air of professionalism. So I was like, yeah, so uh, this, is, uh, this is this is pretty cool. This is probably, probably the biggest thing I've worked on so far. But, uh, let's do it, all right. And inside, I'm just bubbling with excitement. And after the first session, I think I was like, "So, um, any idea where this is uh, gonna be gonna be seen? You know, who's when, where, where are they gonna where are they gonna put this? Who's who's gonna watch this? When 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 do I get to talk about it?" Uh, and it wasn't that long, actually, for for Iron Blooded Orphans, because um, for that one, normally for anime projects, for the for the for the English voice actors, at least. We don't get to talk about stuff until it's out for almost anything. But, uh, but for Iron Blooded Orphans, Sunrise really wanted to, to build up the hype behind it. So I was the first casting announcement that they made because they were, they, I think for, I think it was like one, one new cast member a week for the first month or two or something where they were rolling out casting announcements with no announcement on where the show was going to be yet. Uh, because I think they were still in negotiations with, with Cartoon Network and, and Adult Swim. Um, so I got to talk about, hey, I'm going to be playing Mika in, in Iron Blood Orphans. But I didn't know where or when, and then, uh, and then eventually I think we were, we were a long way through the recording process before the Toonami announcement came out. But uh, we were kind of whispering about it. I was talking to Chris Kaysen, who was the director on the project. And uh, we were kind of like, so, he's like, so rumor has it, there will be, uh, it may make a splash, hint, hint, in relation to the swimming pool, yeah. I was like, all right, well, fingers crossed, and then, yeah, so, we were really excited that it, that it went to Toonami, um, and, uh, and I think the same thing happened with season two, where we had recorded the whole thing before the announcement came out that it was going to Toonami, um, even though we had every expectation that it would. Uh, and then with Mob, um, we were all we were we were all really excited about the show. Uh, no idea where it was going. It was a crunchy roll property, so we figured it was probably a long shot that it would ever end up on television because crunchy roll up to that point had only done. In fact, I think it was Crunchyroll's first dub that they were producing. Um, and then Crunchyroll got their deal with Funimation, and it went to Funimation. And, and that's where it lived for, I think, two years or something before all of a sudden Toonami came out with the announcement Mob Psycho 100 is gonna be, is gonna be airing on our network. And we were like, hey, that's awesome. Now, now all these fans that didn't get to see it the first time or didn't, didn't know it was there, it's gonna be mainstream for everybody. Um, and that, that's when the show, I think, really got life in, in America. Because it had a good cult following already, but there were, there were a lot of cons that I was going to, and I was saying, hey, I'm Mob in Mob Psycho 100, and people were like, I didn't even know there was a dub out. Um, and then with Toonami, now that's probably my, my best known role in anime, I think, so. Another long-winded answer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Well, I mean, you know, speaking for myself, you know, a lot of the anime I even can get a chance to watch anymore is on Toonami. Yeah. So, right. You know, it, it, getting it on there was great because yeah. I, I finally got to watch it. Yeah. So, um, so along that line with Mob, um, Stephen, again, our social media manager, uh, wants to know how you feel Mob has grown as a character from season one into season two now. So much. Uh, so season two is unfortunately not on Toonami, at least not yet, but new episodes are streaming on Crunchyroll and Funimation, both. Uh, so you don't have to pay, you can go online and you can watch it. Um, but uh, yeah, 
Mob has, has grown a lot as a character. Um, season one, for, for a lot of it, I mean, he does go through an arc. Uh, there is there is some development there, but for a lot of season one, Mob is very, his emotions are very contained. Until he hits 100%, he's just kind of that baseline Mob. Uh. <laughs> you know, that's basically where he lives until he gets to 100%, and then it's usually just full-on rage. And then in season two, he kind of starts to, to grow into a more human character, I think, and, and really uh, starts exploring like the, the values of, of friendship and, and what it means to tap into your emotions. And it's really interesting because I used to get the question, uh, what's the hardest thing about being mob in Mob Psycho 100? And it was, my, my answer to that was usually, it's kind of hard to, to keep the emotions subdued, I guess, because he's still feeling them, he's just not expressing them. And then with season two, now that question is easier for me to answer because of the fact that that is so much harder now. Because he's showing a little bit throughout the series now. Instead of nothing at all, he's now feeling those emotions and they're kind of peeking through before he hits 100%. Uh, I, yeah, I love the character development in that show. Yeah, that pretty much covered that. Um, so we'll go to uh, Silver, our uh, chief direct, uh, graphics designer. Okay. Um, so far, what has been your favorite role, uh, and have you ever voiced a character you didn't like? You know, the first okay. One covered, but well, please first, re-elaborate. So the first part of that question: What's my favorite role? That is, I got to pick my favorite child there. Uh, I've I've got a, I've got a, I've listed a few of them. Um, I love all of those guys uh, and many others. Um, I would say 9S in Near Automata is probably the first the, the, the one that people know me for best at this point. Um, I've I've gotten to play some really cool characters, uh, and I and I love being able to play because that's. You know, that's what I always wanted to do, was, was play, play make-believe, and that's what I get to do for a living, so it's great. Uh, but yeah, I cannot pick just one role as, as my favorite. All of them are great. Um, have I ever gotten to play a character that I don't like? Absolutely. I still enjoy getting the chance to play characters that I hate. Shinji Mato in, Fate, in the Fate Stay Night universe is absolutely awful. He is one of the worst humans that I think I have ever seen portrayed in media, uh, especially in the upcoming Heaven's Feel Part 2 movie. Oh my goodness. Those of you who are Fate fans, look for that one when, it's, when, it, when it comes, because it's coming at some point. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's, he's terrible. So uh, also from Silver, um, he wants to know uh, if you could live the life of one of the characters you played, who would it be and why? That's that's a really difficult question to answer because so many of the characters that I've played live in such they, they don't live in great worlds. A lot of them are dealing with some heavy stuff that, and a lot of them are in very dire life or death circumstances and I don't want any part of that. I want something mundane, something that, that we don't see, you know, there's, there's no reason to make TV shows and movies about <laughs> regular life, average Joe just having a day. There's always something terrible happening, <laughs> and I don't want to experience that, personally. Um, <laughs> I guess if I had to pick one, I mean, there are some of them that have some really cool powers like Mob, or like the ch piling a giant robot like Mika would be pretty cool, but to have to deal with what they deal with, I don't know if I like the trade-off. Maybe I would go with Watsuri from Your Lie in April, uh, because the problems that he deals with are problems that are similar to the problems I've dealt with in my own life. Uh, and uh, one of the problems
problems that he doesn't have to deal with is the fact that people like him as a kid, and I was definitely not one of the popular kids, and he, he, he is, so yeah, maybe, maybe I'd go with him. <laughs> Seems like a good choice. <laughs> Righty, um, from Phantom, one of our moderators as well as uh, writers, um, uh, do you go back and or watch uh, and or play uh, games that you voice in? Yeah, uh, earlier on I was, I was watching everything I could that I was, that I was a part of. Um, now I'm, I'm working on enough stuff that I, I feel like it would be impossible to, to watch all of it. Um, so now I kind of just focus on the stuff that I'm really excited about. Um, whether that's something that catches my attention while I'm in the booth and I'm like, oh, this looks like it, it'll be a really good show, I want to watch it. Or it's something that I play a big role in and I want to see how it turns out. Usually even then it's got to be something that catches my attention that, that's... Uh, that looks like it's going to be a good show, um, or that it's going to connect with me specifically. Um, I don't watch. I don't watch or play everything, but uh, I did. I played through all of Near um, on my Twitch channel, in fact, uh, which was a lot of fun. I am finally about to finish Fire Emblem Echoes on my Twitch stream, uh, and I've watched. I watched all of. Iron Blooded Orphans, both subtitled and dubbed. I watched all of Mob, both subtitled and dubbed. Uh, I've watched Your Lion April a couple times. I did not watch the sub on that one, though. Um, and and a lot, a, a fair number of the other stuff, but most of it earlier in the career. These days, I have less time, so I don't watch as much. <laughs> so you mentioned your Twitch channel, which is perfect for the, uh, the next question. Um, when you're not working on a series, what are some of your hobbies? That's a very good question. <laughs> I have a lot less free time these days than I, than I did even two years ago, I think. Um, I do try and get on Twitch a fair amount. The stream that I did last week was the first one that I'd done in seven months. So... <laughs> uh, I am still a little bit of a gamer. I, I, when I just need to unwind, I'll load up Overwatch and play a round or two, or Sea of Thieves is one of my favorites that, that not a lot of people play, but I love it because you just, you can kind of just zone out and sail around and dig up treasure chests and fight skeletons and stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes I'll bust out Rocket League or something. Um, I'm a big hockey fan. I watch a lot of hockey, a lot of NHL hockey. I, I read up on news of the big player trades and stuff. And, uh, and I play hockey in adult rec leagues. I haven't been playing for the past six months or so, and it's killing me just because my team folded and I'm looking for a new place that's not quite as far from home, but uh, yeah, that's a couple of the things I do for fun. Right. And with that said, this ties perfectly into the next question. Um, Steven, who had previous questions, he interacts with you on Twitter uh -huh. sometimes, and he asks, so we've noticed you're a big time Colorado Avalanche fan, uh, where did your love for hockey begin? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a big Colorado Avalanche fan, and it's a good time to be an Avs fan, finally. They made, they won their first playoff series in 11 years this year, and the future looks bright. I think they'll be cup contenders for a, for a while. Uh, maybe even as soon as this coming season, and, and for, for a good three or four years at least into the future, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I got into hockey... When I was, uh, I think I was a middle schooler at the time, uh, specifically because of the fact that my cousin, who's a year older than me, and I grew up in Kansas, there is no hockey anywhere, um, but he grew up in northern Utah and played on a traveling team. He was a pretty good player and, and played kind of all over America, even ended up playing for a college team for a little bit there in Utah. 
Um, so because of him, I got interested, and at the time, the Colorado Avalanche were really good, and uh, that, was, that was really their heyday. Uh, and uh, and they were also geographically the closest to me in the middle of Kansas. It was either them or the St. Louis Blues. And the Blues were terrible at the time, so <laughs> with Colorado. <laughs> All right, so our last question is uh, from Josh, the founder and creator of Toonami Squad. And he asks, if there's anything you're currently working on that you're able to talk about or anything you'd like to give the, uh, the fans a little tease on. Sure. Uh, so obviously, a lot of stuff that I work on is, is still under non-disclosure. Like I said earlier, a lot of times we're not allowed to talk about anything until it comes out. Um, one thing that I can talk about that just came out that I'm excited about is uh, I am the voice of Harry Potter in Harry Potter Wizards Unite, the, the new phone game that you can play just walking around town, and I'm playing a lot of it. Everywhere I go, I've got that thing in my hand, and I'm looking down and making sure that I'm not running into anything while I'm casting little spells with my finger. It's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> and um, one anime-related thing that I can talk about is uh, it was announced, the cast was announced all the way back in August, I think, uh, Mr. Osamatsu, I play Ichimatsu in that show. Uh, it is hysterical, and I cannot wait for people to see it. I don't know when or where that's going to be. We're still, we're still working on it. It's still coming. I just don't know when that'll happen. It's, it's, it's. That's up to that's up to Viz and, and whoever they're they're negotiating with. So, yeah. Uh, is there anything you would want? I don't think so. Nothing on my part. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm done. Uh, thank you so much for joining yeah, Logan you. and I and the rest of uh, Tsunami Squad's followers. Yeah. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Anime Expo experience. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Yep. Thanks for watching, everybody.